Yo, what's going on, Senpai Squad? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we're talking about chapter 19 of Samurai 8. Oh my god, what a weekend of chapters it has been. Because this was another absolute banger of a chapter. And again, 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 right after Black Clover one, I've got to give this one as well a five star rating. I knew, I said it last week, that I'm sure we're going to get a five star rating chapter this arc. I did not, however, expect it to be the next goddamn chapter. You guys, as well as always, you agreed with me with 68% of you going with a five-star rating too. And if we jump into the comments, we've got KRL Chattagoon saying that it was a five-star chapter. Every chapter gets way better and it deserves to be more hyped and loved. And I have to agree with you with news of volume one and two being released in the next few weeks that was confirmed with this chapter as well i want to ask you guys do you plan to get them because i think at the minute we've got boruto the promised neverland hopefully one day we'll get all the rest of my manga up there on a bookshelf at some point but do i need to be adding samurai 8 here do i need to be getting those two volumes well fingers crossed i'll find them somewhere but i want to know if you guys are going to be getting them and supporting the series in that way if you can and then also we've got Hussein Dafar saying, I give it five stars. The art was outstanding. I liked the fight. And unlike the, unlike the fact that Hachimaru is not overpowered, he has a long way to go. I completely agree. The fight in this chapter was so damn interesting to me. And I remember saying way, way, way back when I first started covering this series that one of the things I was looking out for and looking forward to seeing most in this series was some of the aspects of Naruto that he sort of brings across to Samurai 8. Not copying by any stretch of the imagination, but and not necessarily even a homage, just maybe even Kishimoto doing it subconsciously, but just little things which he brings across, such as character personalities, maybe designs, little bits of writing here and there and points, because it sort of shows that their bits that he's sort of proud of or enjoyed the most from Naruto to actually bring them across to Samurai 8. So like I said, it's not copying and maybe not even homage to some degree, but just things that he was proud enough to have in Naruto to then bring across or enjoyed enough in Naruto to then bring across into Samurai 8. I think just little things like that, like I was saying, there's definitely bits of Boruto and stuff in terms of character personality to early Hachimaru, as in early Boruto as well. And I think another one that we saw in this chapter is just how damn addicted Kishimoto is to actually killing his main character without killing his main character. Because obviously in Naruto, you had Naruto die probably like a kajillion times if you take into consideration his shadow clones. And Kishimoto sort of used that to his benefit sometimes on how he can create sudden shock that obviously wears off very quickly when it hits you and the realisation hits you of having Naruto subsequently die but actually just being a shadow clone. And we sort of got a similar sort of thing in this chapter in Hachimaru in the fact that we saw him get stabbed straight through the skull, his head decapitated, arms ripped off, his body was absolutely sliced up into pieces, but he didn't die because that's just, you know, the, the, the Samurai 8 law essentially allows for things like that to happen. But it's interesting because maybe it's just me, but I see little similarities there and I quite like to see it. But talking more about the fight, Ryu, he is so damn cool. I'd probably say my favourite character in the series right now. And that's no joke. He's been here two, three, I don't definitely know more than three chapters. And he's already my favourite character in the series. There's something about him, his demeanour, his design, everything about him I just love. And I knew it. I knew he was going to be a big shot. I knew there was going to be something important to do with him. Now... I'm not saying I'm a genius or anything, because I think that was, it was sort of obvious, but Ryu is something special, and he's going to be a huge, absolutely huge focal point with this upcoming tournament arc, I'm sure of it, potentially even get his, getting his memory back. I, I someone left a comment on the previous review, and I do apologise that I don't ha remember your name, I, I, I've not got it written down, unfortunately, but made an absolutely outstanding point on that, the fact that maybe he's got a virus, 
and that's why he acts so dumb and has forgotten everything. Maybe there's someone out there trying to hack into his samurai soul and his key holder and all that type of stuff, because we know it's a sci-fi manga, very futuristic. Maybe that's the case. Maybe someone is actually taking his memories from him to do with locations for boxes, samurai souls, all of this type of stuff. Maybe they're sucking his memories and information out of him and storing them somewhere else or giving them to somewhere else. But I think, and this has been a much shorter review than usual, but I think what I want to finish off on is the new bad guys. They seem interesting and Kishimoto always nails an entrance. Atta's entrance was fantastic. Naruto, Sasuke, Pain, so many characters, he's nailed just perfect badass entrances and I feel as though these characters sort of started off on the similar track now I wonder if they're gonna sort of be as big as Atta because Atta sort of went past the norm in terms of prologue arcs and how usually the prologue villain usually gets beaten the main character climbs a big mountain metaphorically and yes happy days um, that wasn't the case in this one. Obviously, Hachimura's father passed, killed by Atta, who was then revealed and did not lose at all, and was then revealed to be one of the big main antagonists and working for the main antagonist organization of the series. Now, is that going to be the same with these new bad guys, these new samurais who have been introduced, or samurai? Or are they going to just be sort of like a standalone villain for this arc? Or, and I'm throwing this one out as well, that... They're not going to be the main villains of this arc. I think they could potentially be dealt with quite easily. And I think we could potentially see a new, bigger, more terrifying and important villain later on down the line during this tournament. I'm not too sure. I'd love to know what you guys thought on this chapter in the comment section down below. As always, leave a like on the video as well if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're not already to become a member of the Senpai Squad. We're trying to push for 3k. I keep saying it. You know, 3k by the end of the year few months left few hundred subscribers left let's see if we can smash the goal i'll be seeing you guys in another video but until then as always peace